is Lois Westacott. I recently did the saying hi after church, where he spoke of my father's devotions that he wrote when he was in the hospital. He had a very rare autoimmune disease called polymyositis. He spent about eight months in ICU and a longer stint in the hospital after that. My father, Arno Ginther, was a dairy farmer east of Fort Saskatchewan and a member and elder of the Bethany Lutheran Church. Today, it's COVID that is our trial and our lives are affected by it in many different ways. Much of our time is spent waiting, waiting to see our families, waiting for the vaccine, and waiting for things to get back to normal. The do devotion of my father's that I would like to read is very pertinent. It's entitled, Sitting and Waiting. The nurse was getting me ready. First the stockings, then my running shoes and house coat. I am set to go. Now I sit and wait for my porter to take me to the x-ray unit on the main floor. My wait is about 10 minutes. So I settle in the wheelchair. The porter parks me in the hallway near the x-ray unit. There are four other patients ahead of me. So again, I wait, this time 20 minutes. The x-ray doesn't take long and I'm soon pushed back in the hallway again, sitting and waiting for a porter to take me back to my room. This seems to take the longest. I wait almost half an hour. Back we go to unit 43. I settle in my big chair, waiting now for lunchtime. It seems we are always longing for something to come in the future. We are never satisfied in the present. Even as children, we are longing for something like when will the snow go away so we can play outside? When will we be finished with school? Oh, we wish it was summer so we could go on vacation. For someone in the hospital, especially when I was in ICU, the main activity was waiting. Always lying on my back, it would get very sore. I wait for the nurses to move me to my other side. I wait for someone to talk to me. I wait for the time when I will feel better and stronger and able to turn myself over in bed. Why are we never satisfied with being happy in the present? There are a few people who always appear happy, bursting with joy, seemingly enjoying every minute of their life. What makes this difference? To be satisfied with life in the present and always looking to the future is part of the curse that Adam and Eve received in the Garden of Eden when they disobeyed God and broke his commandments. It was never the same for them and nor for us. It means we are no longer close to God. We are trying to hide from him. He is so holy and we are so sinful. However, it wasn't God who left us. It was ourselves who put that distance from him. He loved us so much. He sent Jesus into the world to pay for our sins. He kept the law on our place and shouldered all our wrong, wrongdoings on the cross when he died to take our punishment and rose again on Easter morning. It's hard to imagine that anyone would die for us, but Jesus did. Our sins are paid for. Our Father in heaven calls us his children. Being his children, we have all the advantages that go with this privilege. He brings his Holy Spirit upon us to be our constant comforter. But the Spirit doesn't come empty-handed. He brings us gifts. The Spirit brings us love, joy, peace, and patience. 
These gifts are so useful, especially in times of severe trial. Having this peace and joy in our hearts changes everything. We stop living in the future and become thankful for every hour we receive. It makes us thankful for all the blessings we have been given. My nurses now wonder at the power that is within me, that my mind is stable and patient despite all my problems. All of us are now assured that though we may still long for better days and pray to God for healing, we are told, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Romans 8, verse 18. The next time you are sitting and waiting, listen quietly. You will hear Jesus knocking at your door. When you hear him gently knocking, be sure and let him in. He will give you the comforter who will change your whole attitude. Oh, what joy can be ours, even confined in a hospital bed. For we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Romans 8, verse 28. Sitting and Waiting by Arnold Ginther, written in 1989. Let's close with a prayer. Dear God, help us to be thankful for every hour we receive, knowing we are his children. Thanks for sending Jesus to take our sin so that we can be his children of God. Help us to live in the present in these trying days with joy, love, peace, and patience your Holy Spirit gives us. In your name we pray. Amen.